Security forces in Bahrain today fired rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse mobs. But in Saudi Arabia, a planned day of rage never materialized after police were deployed in force to deter activists. Unrest in the Gulf and the wider Middle East has driven oil prices way up over the past few weeks. And decisions being made right now by those oil producing countries will have lasting impact on uh, oil prices. Our next guest, uh, takes us behind those closed doors. Shawkat Hamouda served as a senior economist for the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries. Uh, he is now an economist, uh, an economics professor, I should say, at Drexel University. So welcome to the show, Shawkat. Thanks for joining us. Let me- Glad uh, to be here, thank you. Let me ask you uh, first, as we see uh, Oil, oils uh, supplies shut down in Libya and we're concerned about them being shut down in other places. Will Arab nations uh, that can boost production to make up for that lost oil? Yes, uh, Saudi Arabia has an excess capacity of about three and a half million to four million barrels a day. That excess capacity can uh, replace Libyan's oil uh, because Libya produces 1.6 million barrels a day. And so the Saudi excess capacity is more than double the Libyan oil production. Well, won't they already, uh, I would think they would produce and sell as much as they possibly can uh, whenever we see prices this high. I mean, don't uh, $100 barrels of oil kind of uh, nudge producers into using all of their excess capacity? Uh, no, Saudi Arabia now is producing 9 million barrels a day and its excess capacity, its, its productive capacity is well above 12 million barrels a day. So they have more than 3 million barrels a day of excess capacity that still exists. Shawkat, let me ask you, because as we mentioned, you're a senior economist, or you served as a senior economist for the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries. Give me an idea of maybe what would be going on within that organization right now as we see uh, events continue to unfold in Libya, uh, we continue to watch Saudi Arabia and so many uh, uh, countries around the Middle East. Tell me what might be going on within that organization at this point. Uh, that organization includes Libya and also includes Saudi Arabia and Algeria. I think uh, the, the, the major members of, of that organization are Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and United Arab Emirates. Those countries together, they all have excess capacity, but Saudi Arabia has the most excess capacity. I think also uh, Algeria, Algeria, is now saved, is now saved from the Libyan revolution because the Algerians have been fighting each other for 20 years. And if you speak to most Algerians, they will tell you that we're tired of revolutions and so we will not have a revolution. So Algeria produces 1.4 million barrels a day. Right. We will save those 1.4 million barrels a day. Uh, so well, the Libyan revolution is not going to spread to Algeria. Uh, the problem is the Bahrain scenario. The Bahrain scenario where Bahrain is connected to Saudi Arabia and it's next door uh, and the revolution in Bahrain is the one is more scary than well, the Libyan revolution so, so and Kat, let me, to Algeria. Forgive me, but let me interrupt because you do lay out three scenarios and you say one is spreading to Algeria. That would be kind of a medium impact in terms of oil prices, maybe up to 150 a barrel. Scenario two is the Bahrainian uh, revolution will spread to Saudi Arabia. That's the worst scenario that you lay out. $200 a barrel. Sky is the limit, you say, with oil. The best scenario is that the Libyan revolution will not spread to Algeria. Uh, uh, and so on. So what do you think? And the Bahrain revolution will not spread to Saudi Arabia. Oh. This is the best scenario. So, so I get that. So best, worst, medium. What's the most likely scenario based on what you're observing at this point? Just quickly, 30 seconds, please. Uh, I think the Libyan revolution is not going to spread to Algeria. And I think the, the Bahrain revolution is going to be contained. I didn't see a revolution in Saudi Arabia because the Saudi Arabians uh, are, are, uh, are satisfied with their oil price above 100 barrels a day. I mean, 100 dollars a barrel a day. Uh, the, the Saudi Arabians will revolt if the oil price goes to $30, to $30 a barrel. Then the Saudi Arabians will re revolt, but not at these prices of oil, uh, oil prices. So they will not revolt at $100 a barrel. Got it. Hey, Shawkat, thanks so much for joining us. Shawkat Hamoudi there from Drexel University.